I want to talk about a sport that's new to me called pickleball. Now, while it's new to me, it's actually one of the fastest growing sports in America and it's been around for nearly half a century. So while it's new to me, it's definitely popping on the scene right now. And a lot of players are becoming pro and there's a lot of organizations that are coming up. Now, I've been fortunate enough to work with pickleball professional Leah Jansen, who's top ranked in her field. Now, she came to me to get some mental training and the beauty with working with her, she actually has done some cognitive and mental work before in the past. So it was a great transition. And she was in my area here in South Florida. So I say, let's get a session in. So I wanna go over what we did in our session because the pickleball, it's similar to tennis and other racket sports. But while the racket is slightly smaller, and the pickleball is actually more hollow. It doesn't travel as fast. So this is more of a precision sport, being able to make split decisions. Of course, tennis and other racquetball sports require this, but it's to a different degree. And I actually played a few rounds of pickleball myself just to try it out. And we're gonna go through this session to see how we can get her mind right. Now, this first drill is color mismatch. You're gonna see the color on the screen appear red, yellow, green, or blue, and it may have an audio that matches or mismatches. So let's say red comes on the screen, but you hear the audio of blue. Now on the first iteration of this drill, we're gonna have her go to what she visually perceives and ignore the audio that she hears because a lot of times we have this competing task. Think about in a match or in anything, when you're doing the main task, you have other audio distractors that can throw you off. So you can't get rid of that. But we want to teach the player how to be able to still be precise in what they need to do while ignoring the irrelevant audio cues. And that's what this task does. Yellow. Green. Blue. Match. Green. Where we going? Red. Ooh, where we going? Yellow. Green. Blue. Now we eventually flip the directions and cues to make her have to go to the color cone based off of the audio and then ignore the visual. So this is how we get them primed to one direction and switch it around. Blue, green, red, yellow, red. All right. Blue, green, Yellow. Now, in between the sets, she's doing one of our grids tasks with our new grids app, and she's got 15 numbers to find in only five seconds. Now, this is a great drill to do with people who aren't good from coming from behind because you're in a position where there's not a lot of time, and this is one of the biggest parameters we use with Mind Body One, giving them time deprivation. So, less time, more work. It's doable, but it's not easy. You have to really be in the moment. If you take too long to think or process or you have a faltering moment for just a split second, that five seconds just goes it's up. So this drill is great for someone who needs to learn how to stay in it and come from behind. It's on. Now you see, we gave her a consequence. If she didn't get at least 12, that was the target. Now all 15 was obviously the main goal, but if she didn't get 15, 12 was great. But if she didn't get there, then she had to do something called grid run. We have to do five numbers on the 25 grid sprint, 24 feet down and back. So that's 48 feet, five numbers until you complete it all. So it gets the heart rate up, but you still got to think and process it's a little bit of conditioning. So that was the reinforcement or in this case punishment if she didn't complete it. So this gives something at stake. So not only are we simulating the, the time deprivation, we're putting something at stake because usually when there's no outcomes that's gonna give us a repercussion, it's not that high worry for us, but we wanted to put that on her. That's what we did here. Now, if you've been to this page, you see a lot of times where we take the actual sport or if it's tactical, the actual specific task they do in their demographic, we apply it to our mental training. So in this case, we use dinking. So this is basically being able to volley or catch the ball off a bounce and go directly over the net from behind the kitchen line. So we did the same task to practice this movement, which is very common for most players to practice. We added some thinking to it. So we started simply doing some peripheral work where there's a screen to the left or the right of her. And she has to call out the color that flashes on the screen while still keeping her visual on the dinking part. So she's keeping her eye on the ball, doing the dinking motion, but still seeing out of peripheral what color is coming up and making that call out. So she has to be focused on two different tasks, but still be going on the regular motor skill that's relevant to her sport. Now, to progress it, we added more aspects such as 
a certain color, such as green, meaning switch sides in real time. Now she has a little bit of movement and true agility because she doesn't know when it's gonna come up. And then we add even more by having her call out words, either by whatever the color is. Red starts with R, so you say an R word. Green starts with G, you say a G word and so forth. Or we let her do free word depending on the cue. But the point was to give her more stimuli while actually doing the sport specific task thinking and then be able to keep that going. Nice switch. Switch. <laughs> uh, take, stand. Now, in between sets of that, we did our classic time to react drill. This is just one quick burst, teach you how to go and decelerate. Now, we do this with many different populations, but you can see in pickleball how important this is because going up and down that court, left and right, front and back, you need to be able to go on a split notice, make a right decision, and then stop on a dime and make a movement. So this task is great because they have to have a red or blue comb and we give them the ready cue from that point on, you don't know when they're gonna go. So we might hold them for a split second, they go immediately or a few seconds to make them wait and be in their thoughts. But when that light comes on in front of them, it's either gonna be red or blue, they're gonna pick up the corresponding cone and put the light out and we're gonna do this in about 1.5-ish seconds so we know how quickly they can get in that burst and do it consistently while still making the right choice. So you can see how these all correlate and we mix it up so she can get a little bit of this stuff from the sport specific, but also get a little bit of physical as well as the mental. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Now we came back over to the lab to do some peripheral work with the grid task. So we put a hundred numbers on the screen and she had one minute to find as many numbers as possible. Now this is a tricky task in itself because while there's so many numbers to look for in that sea of a hundred, she has to stay focused, but then she has the time constraint. But we added the thinking part with the peripheral when I threw the colored tennis balls to the side of her, she had to call out what she saw from a peripheral vision, but still be focused on that main task in front of her. Now, while we did this for the baseline portion, we added more to it by having each color represent a number, red being one, blue being two, and yellow being three. Therefore, now she has an extra cognitive load. And we wanna see how she perceives things. Did she make sense of it? Oh, was I more focused, less focused? Was I more stressed? Was I in my head? So we're looking at these actual mental skills while doing the cognitive, and she's getting it all intertwined. And we even on the Grizz app have a way to rate this so we can keep track of what she thought she did from a mindset standpoint, but also getting the actual data from her reaction time, her variance to see how consistent she was and her time to completion. So we know effectively is she progressing how we want. So we did a few sets of this to track it. One. Two. No, one. No, two. Three. Three. One. Now, we did also the unsuspected throw with this, which works on also peripheral, but a little bit of reaction and decision-making as we throw the ball from behind her. That's why it's unsuspected, so she doesn't know when it's coming. You can see I do from different angles, different vantage points, and then we add more cues by a color representing something as going to a certain cone or calling out a certain word. So it's always about adding more load, doing more work, and progressing just how you would say in fitness. You would put more weight on or add more duration to an exercise. You do the same thing with mental. Uh, Apple. 
Now, to finish all this up, this session was a great one. It was our first one in person. She's worked with me for a few weeks online doing these drills. It was our first in person session. So I was like, hey, let's do some back and forth volleying with the fit like task. That way she's able to one, react peripherally and can measure it. That's why I love using the fit like system because it's more three dimensional, in this case lateral though, and it's more dynamic and we can still measure it, but she has to still worry about getting the ball back and forth. So this task, she had the two lights to the side of her, whichever one came on, she would quickly go there, react by putting it out, and then she would hit it back to me, I'll toss it back to her and so forth until the 20 seconds were up. So we knew how long it took her to attend to the stimuli, which light came on, as well as keeping the volley going. And this is great because it's once again, bringing back that demographic specific skill with pickleball, but adding this reactionary or cognitive aspect while still staying focused and in her zone. So like I said, this is our first session together. We're gonna have a few more. I'm actually going over to Austin to work with her. So I'm excited for that. But make sure you check that out. If you're new to Pickleball or you're already in Pickleball, we're gonna have a lot more content just like this. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe for this type of content and all our other stuff that we use to get your mind right. Thanks guys. Have a great rest of your day.